It is time to obliterate with Exodia in 2024. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host who likes to obliterate the most. Pause every of our 32 here and destroy. Actually, no, I want you to obliterate that boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. As we climb even higher, the 1300 ladder. Um, yeah, this, this video had to come out or else uh, I don't know what I would be doing with my life. <laughs> so... I can't take credit for this. Um, I have to give a shout out to Shark YGO Pro. Uh, if I remember, I'm going to leave a link to his channel down in the description. This is where I got the build. I got the build totally from him. I wanted to see if people were messing around with this. Um, and sure enough, someone is testing around concepts with this deck already, and I'm very happy to see that. Now, I'm sure that all y'all are going to be questioning the choices of this list and everything else. And, like, why the heck is a troll card, like, troll, uh, uh, it should be called Troll Exodia, but True Exodia, why is that in here? I'm going to explain that. Um, you know, keep in mind that the cards literally just got revealed at the time of making this video yesterday. They got revealed on the 3rd. So, people are going to be messing around with these cards. Infinite Forbidden is not until months from now here in the TCG. So, you know, keep in mind the meta, we're going to have a new ban list by the time that we get Infinite Forbidden. So maybe like the pieces of Exodia move to two. I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe we get retrains of the Exodia pieces that get revealed later on um, in Infinite Forbidden. Uh, kind of hard to say at this point. Um, but I at least wanted to put a list out there, help get eyes on Shark YGO Pro's video. I mean, granted, it's got more views than even how many subscribers I have currently, but I want to help get the information out there so that the community can discuss ways to abuse this because this Phantom Exodia Incarnate thing is, is actually kind of crazy. It's more crazy than I thought it was initially. So uh, it obviously takes five Forbidden One monsters. So if they do retrains of the Forbidden One monsters or if they put out like Forbidden One monsters, kind of like how they did the Millennium archetype of monsters and stuff, then it makes it easier, right? Um, we already know it can be destroyed by the opponent's card effects. Uh, once per turn, if this card battles during damage calculation quick effect, you can make this card gain attack equal to your current life points. So what's interesting about this, I didn't realize this when I first read the card, it gains attack, even though it's once per turn, it's a soft once per turn, so if you have multiple copies, then it doesn't matter. Same with the negation effect, it's a soft once per turn, but it's going to gain attack and keep that gain. Right, so like if it gains seven thousand on the first turn, then the next turn it gains, you know, say six thousand or whatever. So it keeps that. Um, there's been some issues with some of the translations of these cards, but from what I understand, that's how this works. Same with um, the Exod Blaze. There's, it's really up in the air right now, and I made a community post about it. That it's up in the air right now with the translation whether you get to equip two Forbidden One monsters or five, and if you get to equip like up to five or up to two or whatever the case may be, then this card is like absolutely insane. Um, but I'm going with the idea that it can possibly equip five, not two, um, because it was updated, at least YJ Organization updated it to say five. So just do keep that in mind when we're going through this here. Um, so let's just dive on into this deck profile and then we will kind of discuss everything else. But the TLDR with Exodia, it's going to keep on gaining attack every turn. Um, and then the negation, negating the activation, doesn't even negate the effect, just negates the activation, is also a soft once per turn. So um, we're playing three copies of Ash with three Imperm. These are just some basic hand traps that I think whenever you're testing around an idea like this, they're just good to have. Like six hand traps is obviously like not the best thing. Like I feel like if you're going to commit hand traps, you at least need to be playing nine to twelve. Uh, and then, of course, we got the five pieces of Exodia because it's hot. Uh, one Forbidden Lord. Uh, this is a Forbidden Monster. Same goes for, um, well, I'm sorry, that's Legendary Exodia Incarnate. So this is another Forbidden One monster that you can reveal with the Millennium Cross to get to your boy Exodia. Um, but its effect is that it can't be normal or special. Uh, normal summoner set can only be special summoned by shuffling all monsters in your graveyard into the deck. Um, so, you know, if you've got 10 monsters, then all 10 go back. Uh, when it declares an attack, you foolish burial a monster from your hand or deck to the grave. And then it gains a thousand attack for each vanilla in your grave. And if it would leave the field, you banish it instead. If you dump all five pieces of Exodia into your graveyard by this effect, then you win the duel. It's never going to come up. Um, and then we're playing a Horus package. So you would think that this is like kind of bad. But keep in mind that you can use like Horus to dump the... Uh, which one is it here? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. To, yeah, so you dump the uh, Hellfire. 
and then you can banish the Hellfire on the next turn to search you a piece of Exodia. So this card's like actually kind of good. That's why we're also playing Foolish Burial Goods because you can just dump the Hellfire. Like I don't know if Burial Goods is necessary, um, but the idea that you can just go like Goods, dump a Hellfire, and on the next turn just banish it. Uh, I believe it is a so uh, a hard ones per turn. Yeah, it's a hard ones per turn, so you can't just stack them. But it's an interesting concept not nonetheless. And being able to have access to rank eights is pretty good. Uh, we're playing three copies of the Legendary Exodia Incarnate. Um, you special summon by tributing a Forbidden One monster. Can't be special summoned by the ways. Gains a thousand attack for each Forbidden One monster in your graveyard, but it's unaffected by other cards' effects. Once per turn during your end phase, you add a Forbidden One monster from your grave to your hand. And then when this card's destroyed by balance sent in the grave, you can reveal any number of Forbidden One monsters in your hand, and then draw one for each. Definitely not the best card in the world, but it is a level 10 Exodia uh, that you can have access to to make um, this spell card live. And then True Exodia, it's literally just Obliterate uh bait that's all it is like this this card's terrible uh we already talked about exodia called by the grave because it's good um and then the exodio blaze so one level 10 or higher monster you control with exodia and its original name gains these effects you can pay half your life points destroy as many cards in the spell and trap zone as possible then equip five not two i'm assuming it's five if it's two then whatever but hopefully five forbidden one monsters from your hand and or deck to this uh to this card the monster that the level 10 exodia each as an equipped spell that gives it 2,000 attack. So they'll each give the equipped monster 2,000 each. So that's 10,000. Also, you cannot activate any other cards or effects for the rest of the turn. And then uh, the level 10 Exodia, if it attacks a defense decision monster, does piercing battle damage. So that's why people are hoping it's all five pieces of Exodia, because you get all five onto the field. And then if you have like some kind of monster effect that can bounce them, then you know you're you're kind of in an interesting position where like you can just get all five into your hand. Um, as far as I know, though, that really hasn't been discovered yet, or a way to do that. At the same time, if it's two, then you're at least able to get two pieces into your hand by that theory. So, you know, take it for what you will. Once we get the full translations, then it'll be better to kind of, you know, figure out combo lines. Um, Foolish Barrel Goods to dump the Hellfire. I really don't know if you need this. Um, Shark YGO was playing under, like, some sort of OCG list where Burial Goods is at two. Um, I don't know if you need two, though. Same thing with Prosperity. Prosperity was at one on the balance that he was playing on. So he's playing two extra, I have a one Prosperity. But Prosperity is just better. Like, being able to thin through your deck is crazy. Something else to think about, too, with this deck. Instead of playing it like a control deck, even though, like, going Phantom Exodia Incarnate, and then going end phase setting this uh, Exodio Flame, and then having a board nuke during the opponent's turn on standby is really good you could also play this like an fdk deck you can play like hand destructions and stuff and then you can go like hand destruction pitch exodio flame and something else draw two and then on the next turn banish the exodio flame um to get a piece of exodia to your hand so that's that's something to keep in mind uh king sark for the horus cards uh millennium cross people were asking how this card works so you you take the five forbidden one monster cards from your hand deck or face up field and you just reveal them right and then you shuffle back the Millennium Cross, um, and then obviously if you reveal the ones in your deck, then you'll shuffle those back in. Uh, and then you summon out the Fusion Monster. So this doesn't dump anything to Grave. You're not shuffling in anything back other than the Cross. You, this cannot be hand trapped. There is no hand trap in the game currently that stops Millennium Cross. The only way that they're stopping this is if they have like a Baron or something to negate it. This card does not care about D-Shifter, does not care about Ash, does not care about anything. Um, well, unless they're playing like Cyframe, what is it, Delta that negates a spell, which if they're playing Delta, then they're bad because nobody's playing Delta right now. Um, three Prosperity, uh, and then the two Thrust, because the opponent activates a monster effect, you can go Thrust for Cross, which I think is hilarious. Like, uh, the fact that this is a normal spell is just crazy. You just Thrust into this, and you just win. Um, we already talked about Imperm, we already talked about Obliterate, and then uh, the Exodio Flame. Uh, you control level 10 higher Exodia monster, which you will, because this sets the card. Then you just destroy all cards your opponent controls. So, at the worst, you're going to go Cross, you're going to reveal the five pieces, you're going to drop this out, um, if the opponent tries to attack into it, it'll gain 8,000, because you don't lose 1,000 life points until your next standby. Uh, you make this, you're going to go end phase, set the, uh, flame, and then you're going to pass turn. You have a board nuke for the opponent's board during their turn on standby. So, like, you just have this ready to go. They try and, like, you know, make a link line or something, and you just go, okay, activate Exodio Flame, your whole board's gone. Because, like, they're not going to be able to just run over this thing, because it's going to gain attack equal to your life points. And it can't be destroyed by card effects. And nobody's playing Kaijus right now. Now in like 6-7 months when we get this set, are people going to be playing Kaijus? Maybe. But 
yeah, like outside of Kaijus or like Volcanic Queen for the one person in the room playing that, you can't really get rid of this thing, which is really funny. Uh, I put the third Foolish Barrel Goods on the side here just as something to think about. I, you might be able to cut this down to one. And honestly, the more I look at this, the more I'm like, I wonder if you could play this in like a Sky Striker engine. But yet that mostly focuses around spells, so I don't know if you really want to play that. Maybe you play it as like a sub-engine where you play like Millennium Cross with the five pieces. But see, the issue is too, is that the five pieces of Exodia are just bricks. We need more cards like Millennium Cross that uses the pieces of Exodia in some way, shape, or form. Or what a lot of people are hoping for is retrains of the Exodia cards, but I don't know if we're ever going to get that. Uh, just to go through the extra deck real quick, we're playing three of the Phantom Exodia. Um, one Hope Harbinger, one Zeus, a one Photon Lord, two Sky Crisis, the Zombie Vampire, Mask Reina, Little Nightmare Package, Little Knight, and Underworld Goddess. So, I don't want to take up any more of your time. This is just the concept i'm sure that there are a lot of ways that we can improve upon this as a community i'm really curious to know what you guys think about this because i, I want to make this good i'm sure it's going to be garbage even um i was talking with my buddy and he's like any deck that has to play five bricks is bad and i agree like playing five bricks is bad um but there has to be some kind of concept here even as like a sub engine i don't know maybe stun players will play this and like <laughs> they'll go Millennium Cross to make the Exodia and then like summon an Inspector Border or a Fossil Dino and just tell their opponent to eat their ass proper. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.